Hello, my name is Shelby Bishop, and this is my contextual factors report for Granbury High School and Granbury Independent School District. Here I have been studying all level art. In the classes, I mentor a whole class and sometimes focus on singular students for a project. The mindset of the students in the classes can range from being placed in art as a mandatory elective to others who choose to be there. The classes that I attend have a number of students that have social, mental, emotional, and physical disabilities, and some are labeled as special needs. Community and district factors. The city of Granbury is a very diverse place. The town is surrounded by ranch land, and many of the students from, come from the outer reaches and must travel a distance to attend school. Within the community, there is a strong sense of religious passion among most of the older generations, but the younger generation students do not seem to express the same passions. There unfortunately is a wide following for drug culture and use in the lower class areas, which is where the majority of students at Granbury High School come from. Within the district itself, the number of students only counting high school ranges from 440 to 530 students per grade. A four-year graduation of 95.5% in 2016 is up 2.8% 2 from 2015. The racial division of the district is primarily white at 72% and Hispanic at 23.6%, with a total of 3.7% going to African Americans, American Indians, Asians, Pacific Islanders, and two or more races. Among these students, there is a high percent of disadvantage. 49% economically disadvantaged, 39% at risk, 8% English language learners, and 1% students with disciplinary placements. For the district, there are 747 students with a range of disabilities. School factors. The school is similar to that of the district. The number of students ranges from 430 to 460 students per grade. A four-year graduation rate of 97.6% in 2016 is up 1.6% 1 from 2015. The racial division of the campus primarily white at 73% and Hispanic at 22%, with a total of 4.5% going to African Americans, American Indians, Asians, Pacific Islanders, and two or more races. Among these students, is, there is a high percent of disadvantage. 38% economically disadvantaged, 35% at risk, 2.9% English language learner and 2.1% students with disciplinary placements. On campus, there are a total of 214 students with a range of disabilities. The mobility rate for the campus is about 14%, which is not at all bad for the area. Classroom factors. Within the art hall and classrooms, the art educators are not allowed to hang any wall de decorations with anything but the painter's tape thus making it extremely difficult to put anything on the walls for a long time. Since both, most hangings and decorations for art classes include a bit of weight to them from paint, cardboard, or other materials, there are very few hangings up. The handful that can be seen include one that illustrates an example work done by a, quote, student and it, in its equivalent grade, which is very useful to express the quality of work that the educators are looking for. In the classrooms, the desks are set up in groupings that allow for a clear path between the educator's desk, office, supply cabinets, and sinks. Within the office, the campus has Chromebook laptops available for all art students, which gives them freedom to find references and research. Within the classrooms, they also use the educational idea of frame, and here are a few examples. Student characteristics. Students range in age from 14 to 18, and as discussed before in campus and school factors, the racial division of the campus is primarily white and Hispanic. Within the classes I study, there are three students with mental disabilities, one student with a physical disability, and five with dis disciplinary actions. In the classroom I observe, there is a great imbalance of females to males with more females. From my observations, almost all students speak English fluently with a large group of students that are bilingual, Spanish speaking. There are a handful of students that play sports in many of the classes, mostly football and soccer. For the majority of these students in art classes, they are visual learners being taught with examples and PowerPoints. 
Prior knowledge of students depend on which class they are in attendance. In Art 1, or Beginning Art, they are not required to know anything about art or how to do anything. They are taught everything from the elements to how to create a full composition. After beginning level art, starting at Art 2 and on, they only build upon the knowledge learned in Art 1. Once in Honors and Advanced Placement classes, they are required to be able to self-teach some techniques, create complete compositions, and maintain an organized schedule within their work. In my observations, there are some students that quickly and easily understand the assignments and are able to apply their understanding enough to create a well-rounded piece. On the other hand, there are some students who consider the class a blow-off, some going to the extreme of having others do their work for them. The students who take the work home and have somebody else do the work are a problem. And to reduce this problem, um, reducing the time that students can take home projects might reduce the amount of cheating or doing others' work. Another problem in the class is the overuse of phones. Despite the school and class rules saying that phones can be used during class during silent independent work time. I feel like there is an overuse um, during non-educational purposes, including FaceTime, phone conversations, Netflix viewing, viewing of inappropriate content, and other activities. If possible, I would reduce the use to only listening to music because the students have the Chromebooks for research and resource finding. Disciplinary problems are also an issue for some. There are a few students who have a history of drug abuse, physical abuse, and violence, which worries me, but also inspires me to try to help them more. These difficulties can only be fixed with the cooperation of the student in need, so therapy, counseling, and other outlets are offered. These are all good things for them, but some still struggle, and I feel like with some more attention and care, these students could come to love art and safely express their emotions through it.